It's a lot of phenomenon. Thank you. Thank you for the information. No. Let's see if it's still working. Good. So this is like the exam mode in school, and this is like with this number you can do nothing. This is I don't know who put it and why, but this is it's like you cannot use it. So probably it's some space taker. Yeah. Like, uh, great. They yeah. like great, but what's the criteria for this? I never understood. Yeah. Me and I, I don't know how many years. Exactly, that's yeah, why. So you can have a really good game, you can have 5.6 or something, but I don't know why it goes to 5.6, you know? Okay. And then someone has an average game, has, they have 6.1 or 6.2. For men, for men, I understand. In men's statistics, the grade is pretty straightforward. But for women, like everywhere. Let's see, like it's actually it's uh uh -huh, here. I have to watch where it's here. So the problem is like in the program there is like you can put everybody can put some weight on the on the technique you are using. Like every scout I can put here like an ace on attack gives you a 10. A mistake gives you like a zero. A reception minus gives you minus three. So all this together will give you with a certain factor that like value. But that's why I say it's not telling anything. As a setter, you're always fucked up in that value. Because in the live scouting, nobody's scouting the set quality. So you have always like just random because the serves are in only. Maybe a block. As attacker, the same. Like it just that's why I say, like, this is completely nonsense as number. You cannot go on it because it's depending on what the scout put here in, like, what is the value for each thing. And related to your positions, it's, it's not helping. So if the scout takes every single touch and values every single touch, like defense, block, everything, life, then it maybe can tell you something, but still it will not help you to say it was a good game for me or not. It on the scout. Exactly. It yeah. depends on the scout. That's never good if it depends on the scout. So I'd say like this is really that's why I said this is nonsense. You can take nothing from that one. But it's still on the official paper. Nobody takes it off. So whatever. What is more important is the points. Like it's a German one, but it's and English is the same. Like it's a total. Then it's like break points from that total, and then it's like win lost. Like the we it's win lost. So you always see that top scorer ranking. You know, like that was the top scorer of the game. She scored 25 points. For me, it's more important the efficiency. So it means this player, when you see with 25, she brought like in the end 14 points to the team. It means she failed 11, like she made 11 mistakes. So there are players, for example, when you watch down 16, like this is set. So again, this for the points for the set is difficult to say, but you can say she made four points and she just made one mistake, like in that situation. So you see she made an ace and she made two points in attack and she made one attack mistake. So actually 75% of her points are directly for the team. There are a lot of players who have like 25 points and on win lost it's zero or even minus. Yes, they scored 25, but they failed 32. In the top score, they are first. So that's the ranking where it's always difficult. You have to understand like how to read that. If it's just scoring, it's just the points. And yes, this one who gets, for example, the most sets during the whole season, probably she will be the top scorer of the team, no matter how high is her efficiency. But it doesn't show like all the importance for the team. So this is one thing to take care on. Then it's serve, total mistake points. Reception positive and the perfect is a part of the positive. 
So positive means this is the zone like where the setter can play everything, middle also A, and perfect is like really the zone on the net with the right curve and everything. So this is the percentage. Attack, total mistake, hit and block, point, not the efficiency. So it means like when you watch the player, knock down, lead, main score and 24 times out of 50 she made the point so that's nearly 50 percent uh, so when you have yeah, yeah. so when you have the situation over there efficiency you don't have you just can calculate you see for example the player up the belgium one van gestel selling there she scored eight, she made two mistakes, four, so actually she brought just two points to the team. Block is not a mistake, but it's not giving a point either. Either. And so this is like how you can read that numbers. And block is just point, nothing else. Here you have it for the whole team, and here you have it for the set. So you can see, like, for example, reception from Stuttgart in the first set was 33, then 69, then 48. So you can watch in this match report, you get a lot of data. Uh, and the last part down is just like after good reception, you're like The side out Thank you very much. Good. So, just to make it short, like there are simple reports which are taken and they tell something, but not everything. So, if you put your tactics only on that report, it will maybe be wrong. So, you have, for example, there players who have 35% of reception and the other ones 67. So your choice would be, okay, I serve on this one with 35 because she's the weaker receiver. But maybe she has, first of all, it's a number. Like this one, she just got three. This is second libero. And she got like 34. So that's one difference already. The second is maybe she took a bigger part of the court and then it's 35, okay. Our libero where we had there, we gave her like half court alone. So for her, 40% were fine. If she's in one third, she need to be over 60. So if I judge only by these numbers without video or anything, then it's just like, there is no sense. For attack the same, I can say, ooh, there's a very bad attacker. She just made 90% of points. If you watch the video, maybe she had all sets four meters out from a 10 and she cannot score. So this report is not telling you anything 
to prepare the game. So just to give you an example, what is the base analyze of like a little bit more data? I will show you short the information what we are using to or we are using to prepare the game and what it's relied on. And then it's up to you because then we go in the positions, you will get like a device and then you will watch the game part from yesterday. And then you have like some analyze to do, not statistic wise, but I can show you on what you can watch because after it's up to you. So you don't have to read, like be able to read all the numbers. For example, that's the base. It's already the concluded information from this rotation from that team. So we have like four different set of calls. That means middle is running A, middle is running shoot, middle is running behind the setter, middle is running slide. Then after bad reception, after good reception, distribution means like how many times who got the ball in that rotation after good reception, who many times or how many times, sorry, the player got the ball in money time. It's different. You have to know who gets the ball in the end of the set than in the start of the set, for example. You have the attacks. What is also interesting in every rotation, where the setter plays when the reception is coming from one, when the setter plays when the set uh, reception is coming from six, when from five. What happens when the setter moves forward? What happens when the setter moves stay in the middle? What when she's moving backward? What when she's on three meter and all together? And this for every rotation. So like this, you create up the plan. The same, it's like here with the numbers. So it's, let me say, take like this one. Reception in this rotation, attack after good reception in this rotation, attack after bad reception. So you can see like which player gets more. Most. Here's a simple difference. Opposite, she got like most of the balls after good reception, but after bad reception, she is lost like on third, fourth position. So that changed the priority already. Counter attack in that rotation. Then counter attack after good defense and counter attack after free ball. In some teams that will give you information every time in free ball in that rotation, they play middle or they play position four, whatever. That gives you priority on the block, not only on the reception, but also in counter-attack. So this is just like, if you have a game scouted, this is like, you can go in all details depending on your scout, but you, this is all what is possible like to scout, to put it on from the video. So it's possible to take from the scout or like from the official scout from video, how many times it was counter-attack in that situation. What happened when the set was moving right? What happened when the set was moving left? It's possible. So you can ask if you're a middle blocker and you want to know and you are not working on that in video. It's possible to scout that and you can ask for that. The point is, of course, the scout needs to record it. So you can scout everything or like just the points. And that's why you are a little bit depending, of course, on what level you have a scout there. So that's just that you know you can do a lot in that part. The second thing is like about attack, like quick ball, high ball, fast ball on two, high ball. So for some players, you see it here, maybe a little bit better. It's a big difference between high ball and quick ball, for example. So you just watch where this player was sitting and already from the picture, you can say like, okay, does she have the line or not? Does she have a short knee or not? But again, I need to know the sets too. If I say now, okay, on high ball, this like this line like this means like shot or tip. So this player on high ball is just going down the line only with shot and tips. By seeing the picture, I have to go to the video and look, is this because she, of her approach or is this because of the set? Because when the set is, shit on that situation and she can just do emergency ball of course it looks like this but there are players who are doing that so i need to use the video you cannot make tactical decisions just by using numbers or pictures without the video control 
So what you can do in that whole story, the main thing is like the personal analyze what you can do alone. Mostly if you are alone or you don't have a situation that you have a professional scout who is like taking the high level of that, or you want to see practices or whatever, it's possible to put also like nowadays it's simple. You put your own mobile phone behind the court and you film your practice. Up to you if you want to have it. And then it's like you have the practice filmed, so you can use it for your own. You can do the same for the game, whatever. It's depending. Some leagues, it's not obliged to have videos. Some teams are not filming their games. Nowadays, with tablets and phones, like everybody can do it. So it's that's one way it starts. So it's up to you. It's your responsibility. If you want to have video, you don't get it. You get it on your own. So, and then it's the next point. You don't have scouts, for example. If you have no knowledge in like scouting, of course, it's difficult for you like, to sit at home and do the scout for that. But it's still, there are possibilities to track it. For example, there are apps. This is like video tagger. I think it's on eight euro. It's for iPad, iPhone. And there you can just like put, for example, you have the video on your phone. You record it by your own. You don't have a scout who is using like the practices to scout. So you put the video in there and you make like marks, for example, set, pass, block, point, mistake, whatever. And you are watching the video and you're just pressing the buttons. That was a set or that was a good set, whatever. And in the end, you say like, show me all good sets, show me all attacks, show me whatever. So you can do the scout by yourself, not like the super professional way, but at least you can cut the video. Another trick is like when you don't have like apps for that, you don't have iPhone, iPad, or like you don't find any app, put your video on YouTube in YouTube in comment section. You can like write, you can put it on private, the video that nobody else seeing it, but you can put a comment after. And on the comment, you can just leave the time. So when you watch YouTube video and you know there's a time down in the video, like it's one minute, 12 seconds. If if you put one double point zero seven in comment, you can click on that comment and you are on the video on that point. So for example, you are watching your video practicing, you can do on the paper, like, okay, good set, good set, put the time by hand. Next on one zero five, good set. On two minutes off, oh, I was bad on the ball. Two minutes free, I was like not on my base position. But then you have to watch the paper, whatever. So you can do it on YouTube and then you just have to the comments there and you see, okay, like you track it, track it. Okay, uh, here I miss basically You click, okay, this looks like this because you can go one month later back. So this, like, this is a setup for yourself. When you have this professional surrounding, it's simple. But I can tell you, it's just like in the Champions League, even there are teams who don't have that. And in most of the stronger leagues, it's maybe the top two, three teams. And all the others have some special situation. So we also had in Germany there in the club, the first year I had one, like the system was also scout, but the second and third year we had just a scout for the games. And he was not like super professional scout, so he could do the live scout. So we coaches did then the, the detailed scout after, and we were preparing the games. So the same for us coaches. I have a scout or two or three. If I'm in Vakif Bank, I have three scouts. Perfect. I can take everything, probably like the shoe size of every player in the moment she's hitting, whatever, I don't know, but just like everything. And that's for me as a coach, a different approach than if I have a scout to just take this match report and I have to analyze the rest. Same for you. You get it. Perfect. You don't get it. Find a way to get it if you need it. No? So this app, it's one thing which is easy or YouTube or put the list, whatever. It's always possible. So now about the thing for you, you will go short in the, in your positions, but to get her up, you can sit wherever you want and we'll do like 45 minutes. We will not watch complete. Like you can take one device with you, one can take the laptop and one group, this iPad, one this and one this one there. And then you are just like watching the video, like starting simple. So, of course, it's perfect if you have something like uh, cut it. So you can just choose, like, give me all attacks, give me all like receptions. But if you don't have this, 
which is like often the case, or you just have a video from yourself, which you analyze from a practice, you don't have the skull. So you have to work on the simple video. And it's just like, you know, two seconds front or two seconds back, or you put your notes. So what I suggest you, it's two things. The first one, when you are on the court, take something what you are watching on, like on you. If you are not on the court, like now in this practice, you can watch either your position or what I recommend, it's watch the other players who will play with you. I always face players to say like, when I always ask the players to analyze the video before the next practice, when we have the game, so they have to watch the video, they have to put their notes, but it was cut it already. They were always coming play, but yeah, I didn't play. What should I watch? I didn't play, I have nothing to watch. So if I'm setter, for example, I will watch the middle blockers, my middle blockers. Okay, when they are available, like when they are there, how is the approach from the outside hitters? What was the reception on this side? Where they are moving? What can I prepare? I will see on the video, ah, now I see in that situation, the opposite is always late, or the opposite is ready, or the middle is not there. Or when the middle is coming from four, she cannot come A. So I remember, I would just prepare myself to play. So I was not on the video, but I watched the other plays in case I mean, I know already that the middle blocker will do that all the time. So I can sit there and say, I didn't play, it'll just like watch the game. Or I start to analyze in case that I'm playing, I'm already prepared, I will do better. I put up my chance to be on the court after. So if you are not playing, choose to watch your position. So another setter, if you are setter, another receiver, if you were receiver, libero, libero, whatever, but you were always in. Huh? Or watch like your net row. For example, now when you're setter, you know, if you're out, you come in as a six and next time you will be on position two from this exercise with back row opposite and position four and middle. So maybe before you go on that position, watch like what those players are doing, for example, in order to prepare. These are the two advices I can give you. And then because you're not alone, you are like at least two on your position. You can also like stop quick and ask like, hey, what do you see here? I see it like this, see it like this, or do you have an advice? Or you can like discuss it. Huh? So you can go in your own speed. You can say, okay, we just watch the video, I make the notes. And you just watch normal speed. Mm -hmm. Or you say, okay, like we stop in the moment we touch the ball or whatever, it's up to you. Huh? But I just want you to like work with what you have. So you have a video without scout, start to track with the notes, write it down or take one theme. like this discipline part could be for a lot of you an issue. So just write down base position from block, base position in defense, those two things we're working on. And every single time you are like saying yes or no. So what, what are ready to take the second ball? Were I quick on the net with the hands? Just these two things. Or when you watch technical, remember what we did with Ryan the first days, like this foundations. Watch yourself in defense, where were your hands? And make a cross. They were there, they were wrong. They were there. And in the end, after the game, after the analyze, you see, okay, out of 50 times, I was 30 times with the hand like this and 20 times my hand were wrong. So you remember it for next time you play, next analyze, you count again and you see, okay, now I was 42 times from 50 times. So let's see the progress. It's not only by the stats. So if you analyze the video and you want to get better, watch how you move, watch how quick you are there, but put one or two focus. You cannot watch in one video 10,000 things. So choose one thing, what you want to analyze from that part, write this down for you uh, and find a way like quick together. If you run the video through or you stop a little bit, I propose you in the start to run through because you're changing and some players are out that everybody has a chance to see yourself and everybody has a chance to see the others when you're not playing. And then maybe in second part, you can stop sometimes to, to see. The videos are online. Anyhow, you will get the link then from line so you can watch them another time, a little bit more detailed. Okay? So you don't have to sit here inside. You can go outside, whatever. I will just prepare quick the videos on all devices. I will go out. 